everyone, it's Kathy Zilski. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I have a colorful encouragement card featuring some brand new products from both me and Simon Says Stamp. I'm really excited about how this card turned out and I look forward to sharing the process with you today. Thank you. Let's take a look at the products. This card features a brand new set from me called You Got This. I like encouragement sentiments. Uh, I find that there's always a need to send a little uplifting message to a friend in need. And so I designed this set with a bunch of sentiments and some coordinating dies. So if you like cutting out your titles, there are dies for most of the bigger titles. Then I'm also going to be using this brand new triangle element die. It's a really cool geometric shape that cuts out this very fine collection of triangles. My Distress Ink colors today are Festive Berries, Worn Lipstick, Spiced Marmalade, Mustard Seed, Twisted Citron, Cracked Pistachio, Peacock Feathers, and Seedless Preserves. I'm going to be doing some painting. So I've got a nice decent sized brush here. This is a, uh, number 12. And I've also got a few sequins that I'm going to be using. And for cardstock, I've got some fog gray cardstock from Simon Says Stamp. I'll be using Nina Solar White 110 pound and also some Distress Watercolor cardstock from Tim Holtz, but I'll be using the smooth side. I'll have a few other products as we go, but let's jump into the painting. Now I'm working today with these Distress Cubes and my Tim Holtz glass media mat. And I like this tool, if you will, this product because you could just smush your colors down and you see them very clearly over on that white side. All I'm doing is taking my brush, adding some water, picking up some of the ink, and putting it down onto the cardstock. There's no real science to this other than I'm gonna work my way through in a rainbow. And so I can follow the Roy G. Biv, right? But I'm just laying down little bits of color. It's supposed to be messy. It's supposed to look imperfect. And as I need a little more and less, I will adjust. Because what I want to do is I want that die cut to be completely contained over the wash of color that I'm creating. So I keep adding a little more ink down and taking less water to it if I want to add a little bit of gradation or variance. But again, I'm not being super scientific about this. And between each color, I just take my little chamois, wipe it down, and repeat. Now the worn lipstick is a much lighter color, so this one took me a little bit longer to lay down the color. And that's the other great thing with these Distress Inks is you can just keep layering them over each other. They look really cool. I think interesting things happen when they overlap. So all I'm doing is working my way through the rainbow. Adding in the orange, picking up the color. Again, more water means a more diluted color. This yellow is so bright. I love it, that's the mustard seed. The Twisted Citron took me a while. I think my Twisted Citron pad is getting a little dry. So that's gonna be, that's gonna be going into my next order because it is my favorite green. It's the greatest green alive today. Thank you. Next, we're coming in with a little bit of the Cracked Pistachio and a little bit of the Peacock Feathers. And as soon as I put that down, I knew this is a little strong for the rest of the colors. So I just quickly grabbed a little more water and softened it out a little bit. Now I thought this looked pretty good as is and I think I could have walked away but I decided to come in with a little bit of the seedless preserve just so I had my full Roy G. Biv. And that's it. The die is going to fit perfectly over that and now I just decided to use my heat tool to facilitate drying but once that was pretty dry I'm setting it aside. Now it's time to cut out this triangle element shape. I'm using Nina Solar White 110 pound weight. That tends to be my go-to weight for everything because it's great for card bases, but it's also great for a delicate die cut just to give it a little more heft. And this actually cut beautifully. I didn't require a metal shim, but here's a little thing. Sometimes when you're running something through, it will have what I call hairs. <laughs> now I'm gonna poke out all the holes here, but I just wanna show you what I'm talking about. This is where a metal shim can help. See the little bits of paper that still maybe didn't cut perfectly? Easy way around that, just take some of this purple tape, keep it, of course, on your fingers, thank you, 
and just go over gently on your die cut and look at all the hairs it picks up. I know it's not hair, but you know. Next, I'm gonna use Elmer's spray adhesive. I have this box with a piece of cardstock. I spray it off camera and I do hold my breath because I don't wanna get high from the fumes or you know other things. Then I'm just gonna stack these together. The spray adhesive is so nice because it's very sticky. It lays the whole adhesive down at once. It's a time saver. And I'm gonna glue these together, put a brick on in between, and set that aside as well. I'm using the This Too Shall Pass sentiment. I really like that. I think it's simple and I love the topography on this. I, that probably sounds arrogant because I actually designed it, but you know what I mean. I'm using the scrap as well from cutting out one of the dies, making, making the cardstock work for me, people. But I'm gonna stamp in Versafine and then hit it with some clear embossing powder from Hero Arts because I want to create a little bit of texture and a little more shine on the sentiment. So the Versamark stays, stays damp and you can sprinkle on your embossing powder and it will stick to it. And that's kind of cool. Tap off the excess. And now when I hit it with the heat tool, see how it goes really black? It also gets a little slight dimension too so that it looks raised. And I like that. I am using a template. And the template is so helpful. I cut a template using the coordinating die out of a different color cardstock because then it allows me to frame it all out, tape it all down, and then I can place my actual die back into that hole, right? Tape it out. It looks like a hot mess here, but once it runs through, it just eliminates the need for guesswork when you have a sentiment. And that looks pretty good. All right, moving on. Sometimes with watercolor pieces, they don't flatten out the way you would like them. I don't know if this has happened to you, but I keep a pair of plates called paper flattening only plates. I have to have that so I don't accidentally cut with them, but I will take a clean piece of copy paper, put it between the plates and run it through my machine. The reason I like to use clean plates for this is that if you have old plates with a lot of marks on them, they can transfer to your piece. I've seen it happen to me. Well, and that didn't get as straight as it could, but let's just say it's gonna be fine. Okay, next I'm gonna trim this piece down so that it is five and a quarter by four. And I've cut a piece of fun foam that I'm going to adhere to the back. I like to use fun foam, it's just a nice even dimension. And I like to use this sticky scrapbook adhesives tape because it's very quick and it holds that fun foam on fantastically. So there's that. Now prepping the card base. This is a top folding card, five and a half by four and a quarter. I'm gonna press that down with my bone folder using the fantastic score buddy as well. Great tool. And I like to tape my cards closed. I just have a hard time placing anything straight if part of the card's popping up. So I always use my purple tape. You could use repositionable adhesive. That would work great too. I'll use Gina K Connect glue to add to the back of the fun foam and then use that to adhere the card to the base. I like that you can move it around a little. And I'll just put a brick on that as well until it sets up. It doesn't take too long. And now I've gone ahead and added some spray adhesive to the back of my die cut piece. And I will place that down as well. And again, a brick. I'm also gonna add a little tiny bit of foam adhesive, thin foam adhesive to either side of the sentiment. And also we'll add a little multi-media mat, or is it medium multi? Well, you know, it's liquid. I'm getting a little dry. I'm, the bottle's almost done, but I love this stuff because it's very, very strong when it dries. And I can center my sentiment right along the line. And again, I'll throw the brick back on just to let it adhere. And to finish off the card, three silvery sequins. And that's it, that's the finished card project. I really think this is fun and bright. I love the white and the rainbow painting and it's very simple and graphic, but I'm really happy with how that turned out. So thanks so much for watching today and I'd love to have you become a subscriber and I will see you back here with another card video soon.